In this video, we're gonna take this motor apart, figure out what happened, and discuss motor build plans. Let's do it! So like I said before, guys, not really entirely sure what happened to this motor. I have to really take it apart to figure it out. It could be something on the top end. It could be something in the crank, some of the bearings down there. It could be a rocker arm in the top. It's not clear, so I really got to take this apart. You can see I got a few accessory pieces that I've got to take off, and then I'm going to start working on the top end and see if the problem's up there. I got the valve cover up. I'm looking in the the head and the valve train and everything seems fine. I know that uh, I needed another valve adjustment. Things were a little on the loose side, a little noisy for my taste. I know it's better to have noise than to, to have no noise because everything's too tight. But um, I'm also looking, I don't know if you could see this, but there's some, there's some scrape in there. That's not necessarily good. So that's not a good sign, but it's definitely not what was causing the noise. So next I'm gonna take the head off after removing the timing components. Alright guys, at first I wasn't sure, but now I am sure the problem was in the block. So if we look at cylinder number two, I know it's not easy to see, but there are uh, gaps. And I was able to push it down slightly, so it's loose. So all the other cylinders don't do that, nice and tight, no problem. But cylinder two was loose, and I was able to push it down slightly. And you can even see one of those holes, one of those gaps right there. That is not supposed to be there. This thing must have been burning crazy oil towards the end. You can even see some scraping along the side here. So this is our problem, it's below it. Check this out people. Not so good, sure is shiny, but those are shards of metal that somehow they're everywhere, everywhere. Okay, I have to pause for a second on uh, the progress I'm making because of a couple things that are going wrong. Number one, I cannot swivel this all the way around because of those bolts right there. Um, so I'm gonna have to put some spacers on this side so that I can get it to turn all the way around. I have to take the flywheel off so I can get the um, bracket for the real main seal off. And I have to take off all this timing stuff right here because uh, part of it's connected to the oil pump and the oil pump has to come off before this bracket underneath can actually be removed. Like Now that I've added some spacers on one side, I can turn it around one way without it hitting. So now I'll put the block back on the stand and turn it over, and then I'll be able to take off the uh, girdle, which is down there on the bottom, and then uh, the crank will pull out, and then I'll take out the rods and pistons. Okay, 
Now, I could turn her all the way over. Get the color that. It's the first time it's been able to drain upside down. That is just unacceptable. people so the block is bare and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go show you what happened As you saw back there all my main cap bearings are fine and so we have cylinder four three two and one so if you look at cylinders four three and two the rods all the rod bearings are there but cylinder two wasn't there also the caps here's the cap for number three rod bearing in there cap for number two Sorry. No rod bearing. When I opened this up, the rod bearings were completely missing. Also, I don't know if you noticed that, but the uh, wrist pin is loose. The other ones stay up nice. But number one, it's extremely loose. So, hitting, knocking around without uh, rod bearings in place because they had obviously been spun and shredded into the oil pan eventually uh, caused the wrist pin to be under load and it loosened that too. So, that's not good. Luckily, I'm replacing the pistons anyway and the wrist pins as part of the build. <laughs> Actually, in disbelief that, oh my gosh, I was running this car all the way home with both cylinder two rod bearings spun. And so that's why I was making that clanging noise. I literally can't believe this happened, but we're going to move on now. All right, guys, I'm going to talk over the build plans with you. I've written them out here. First things first, oil starvation prevention. I am positive that going around the Andretti hairpin, the corkscrew and uh, maybe Wayne Rainey curve at Laguna Seca is what caused oil starvation in cylinder number two. First thing, I'm going to get a ported oil pump. Ported oil pump will allow for uh, more oil pressure um, into the block and that is a huge benefit when going around those tight corners. But it's not the only thing. I'm going to get a baffled oil pan. Um, Moroso makes one for uh, H&F series so I'm going to see if I can have them custom make a baffled oil pan for me with an exit sump on the side, not a big deep sump. Um, and then on top of that, maybe I'm gonna also put in the factory windage tray, which appeared in the Accord SE, which had the F22A6 motor. And so get one of those from a junkyard. And lastly, an oil accumulator. Someone uh, on the CB7 Tuner Forum brought this up to me. It's a very good idea. And I would get a solenoid to turn that on from inside the car when I start the motor to prevent a dry start. So that's another issue. And I wanna avoid all that so I have no issues with oil. Then we're gonna to move to uh, the block. Um, I'm gonna keep the F22 crank rods and I'm not gonna mill the head. I don't need to because what I'm gonna do, Arias makes these awesome pistons. They're mid compression and they have um, a negative 2.5 cubic centimeter dish, so a smaller uh, dish than the F22 pistons, and they bring up the compression with all those other things the same, according to Zeal Auto Works' calculator, they bring it up to 10.96 to 1. I love that, right below 11 to 1. I could probably, with a good tune, run 93 octane, not have to get 100 octane gas or do any water methanol injection. And then, uh, according to fit, uh, in order to fit those pistons, we're going to need a 1 millimeter overbore. To bore the uh, F22 cylinder walls to 86 millimeters. Um, 85 is very limiting. Pretty much the F20, F20B and the F22 are the only ones that had it. So that's going to be great for power. But there's more that has to be done to make use of that power. On the head itself, I'm going to use oversized valves. Precision Edge Performance has um, what are called these 0.5 millimeter oversized valves. So I'd have a, uh, and they have these bronze valve guides. And so put that in as a kit and get a nice valve job, a new reseat, uh, modify those seats so that it's good for those oversized valves. Um, that'll be great on both the intake and exhaust side. I'm going to get some extensive exhaust port work done. The F22 head flows well, very well, but the exhaust could flow better. And so having that done properly by a trained professional, not just going in there with some stupid grinder uh, myself is what I'm going to go with. 
redo the uh, merge and redo and gasket match the ports themselves. Then I'm going to be looking at a thermal coating for the inside of this, the combustion chamber on the head and um, a diamond finish. I, I didn't get the exact name, but it's diamond encrusted or something finish. Make a perfectly smooth surface on the bottom of that head so there's no head gasket issues or at least minimal. And I will be using a three layer OEM head gasket replacement for sure. Next, uh, the cam. I'm going to go with Delta. Uh, Delta has a 282 cam. I'm going to make sure they have that profile for uh, the F22 cam. Um, webcam does have a stage two profile. And uh, then there's this cam that I found recently called from Rocket Motorsports. It's called the M21X Stage 4 cam. And it had the largest duration numbers and uh, the largest lift I'd seen, largest percentage increase in lift and duration I'd seen. So I'm going to look into that. I haven't quite made my decision on that yet. Then we go to bolt-ons. Sorry about the phone. I'm not going to answer that. Uh, the bolt-ons, we got a CNC ported. H23 runner idea and uh, there is this company called Bad Guys Worldwide down in Anaheim. They do great work. I'm going to have them do quite a bit of this work actually. They have a CNC machine and they port, uh, they, they, they got out the runners and the lower plenum of the H23 manifold. They've got a map for that and um, the, the pictures I've seen it looks fantastic. So then for the upper plenum what I'm thinking of doing is um, not using it actually getting this the stackable twin upward facing 70 miller throttle body kit. This shop in Maryland put it together, a couple different parts. A spacer, twin 70 millimeter throttle bodies, nice velocity stacks shooting straight up. It's 140 millimeters of air intake versus the 60 millimeter H23 throttle body that I had now. Um, I've heard wonderful things about this setup. I really can't wait to try it and put it out there on YouTube for you guys to see. Um, then we're going to move to the exhaust. So. F22, very limited options for us. Um, but if you can take many of the H22 headers and cut off the flange and weld on the F22 flange, you've got a lot more options, and that includes PLM. They make a tri-Y header. Version 2 is the one that has the flex pipe, and so I just need to weld on the F22 exhaust flange so it works. It has a 2.5-inch collector, which is a little disappointing because I don't want exhaust to be a restriction. I'm going to go from two and a quarter inch to K Teller's three inch exhaust piping setup. Um, I'm going to include a vibrant ultra quiet resonator and vibrant muffler, and it's going to be a great sound. And then we'll talk about deletes. Need to delete a few things, um, including the balance shafts. I want less rotating mass, less rotating inertia. Um, Kaizen Speed makes this kit for most of the H series and F series blocks, and uh, they have an F22 kit. I'm going to combine that with not the stock harmonic balancer, but the ATI Super Damper, um, which just has a row uh, for the alternator belt. I'm going to convert the power steering to a manual rack. So the manual rack will uh, not have much play because there's a way to remove the play if you remove the hoses and everything, and I'll go through that with you. And uh, so I won't have the power steering to worry with. And then I'm going to do some stuff to the inside, include remove the dash, uh, uh, remove the stock seats, and I got lots more planned. More on that to come. I'm super excited to get started on those plans. I can't wait, um, but I have to be patient with the funds. So my wife and I have talked. What we're discussing is having the funds come from YouTube monetization. I have a few channels. This is one of them. Uh, you guys can help with that by uh, just sharing the videos, liking the videos, watching the videos, um, commenting. We get the the networking and the channel going uh, that would help a lot with that thank you so much for all you've already done to support me and what I do and all the comments I really appreciate it keep it up and we'll get this going as soon as we can for now this is Falconator signing out